The Lexus LC500 is the car of a generation. It looks like a spaceship. It drives like a dream. Its sales numbers are so low that someday it'll be one of the rare performance cars. And it's so comfortable that once you've been inside, it's hard to imagine yourself in any other car. The problem is no one knows about it. Today, we're gonna change that. This is the 2024 bespoke build Lexus LC500. And I'm Alanis King. Let's go for a drive and stick around for the end of this video for this car's full report card. Before we get to this, LC500, I wanna tell you about Home Field Apparel. Can you believe this Jeff Gordon jacket I'm wearing right now? Or this Hendrick Motorsport shirt? Both of these are so cool. They're officially licensed and there's checkered flag patterns inside the jacket and in the pockets. I absolutely love this. And if you love it too, Home Field has all of this, other vintage style motorsports apparel and vintage style collegiate apparel. If you're interested in it, you can go to the Home Field website and use my code Alanis24 for 15% off your order. It helps me, it helps Home Field, and hopefully it helps you too, because look at this. Now it's time to get to one of my favorite cars in the entire world, the Lexus LC500. The Lexus LC debuted in 2016, four years after a concept car called the LFLC charmed the 2012 Detroit Auto Show. LFLC, like all modern Lexus names, probably just sounds like a bunch of letters. But Cars.com called the LFLC a worthy desktop photo for any computer. Car Throttle called it drool-worthy. And Lexus itself said the car took Lexus's new design direction one step further. It was easy to think the LFLC's sultry looks and strong presence would remain a concept, since often automakers' concept cars either never make it to production or get watered down to be nearly unrecognizable. But then came the production Lexus LC500, a car just as beautiful and daring as that concept. The LC literally stands for luxury coupe, just like LS in Lexus LS models stands for luxury sedan. And the RX in Lexus RX models stands for radiant crossover. Lexus advertised the car with a nearly 500 horsepower, naturally aspirated, 5-liter V8 driving the rear wheels, a 10-speed automatic transmission, seating for four, and a 0 to 60 time of less than 4.5 seconds. The Detroit Free Press called it the face of the brand's future. Now it's 2024, and this Lexus LC500 looks almost identical to that LFLC concept from 2012. And I don't say that as a bad thing. This car is and will forever be ageless because it was so far ahead of its time in the 2010s that it's still ahead now. Another thing that has not changed much over the years is this car's big old V8 engine. This one has a naturally aspirated 5 liter that makes 471 horsepower and 398 pound feet of torque. All that power goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission to the rear wheels, sending this car from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.4 seconds. The LC500 does not come with a manual transmission because it's a grand tour, which is meant to be sporty luxury. And for some reason, we associate that with automatics. Another thing that has not changed much over the years is the LC500's price. The first ever LC500 started at $92,000. And this car right here starts at 97.7. If this car's price had grown with inflation, it would start at $116,000 today. But instead, the price has only grown by about $6,000. This car is more inflation proof than your groceries and it is legendary. That's ridiculous. The 2024 LC500 comes in three main flavors, the coupe, convertible, and hybrid. 
The coupe and convertible come with the V8, and the hybrid comes with a 3.5 liter V6 and a pair of electric motors, making 354 combined horsepower. The car also has so many good appearance options. You can spec carbon fiber all over it, despite the fact that the car is massive and not really designed for lightness. And exterior colors include ultrasonic blue mica, which is on my loaner, infrared, copper crest, which just looks like a gem, nori green pearl, which is like a sparkling forest, and flare yellow, which will literally burn your eyes. It's beautiful. My first LC500 loaner years ago was flare yellow, and I think about it probably once a week. I am not over it. Nothing prepares you for your first encounter with a Lexus LC500. It doesn't sound like much, because if you're not familiar with the car, what even is an LC? But then you see it, and it's all you can see. These headlights are so sharp, yet so elegant. This massive hood houses a massive V8, and then the body just ever so slightly tucks in at the doors before softly flaring out at the rear wheels. Each of these 21-inch wheels is so perfectly tucked into the body. It's just beautiful. And every single time someone sees this car, all they can talk about are its hips. And as a woman on the internet, I can relate. Total, this car costs $107,680, which is a Deal! I drove an LC500 years ago and it was $107,000. And it was a good deal then, and it's the same deal, actually a better deal now. The problem is no one understands that deal. In all of 2023, Toyota North America reported selling 1,700 Lexus LCs up from 1,400 in 2022 because Lexus sells about 100 of these a month. But do you know how many hybrid Lexus LCs Lexus sold in 2023? I'm gonna let you guess. I'm gonna give you five, four, three, two, one, 37, up from 19 in 2022. Just put your original guesses in the comments because I think we all need a laugh and that could help. I find this so funny because automakers will talk about how there's no business case for a manual transmission. No one's gonna buy it, blah, blah, blah. Is there a business case for a hybrid Lexus LC of which we sold 37 in 2023? No. And if you made a manual Lexus LC 500, do you know how many you'd sell in a year? More than 37. I don't make those decisions, but I do get in the trunk of every single vehicle I drive. And it's time for that. Now, I have gotten in a Lexus LC500's trunk before, but I'm not gonna spoil it for you. I'm just gonna put my home field apparel jacket, Code Alanis 24, inside, and then I'm gonna follow it without my dirty shoes. <laughs> All right, here we go. We have one main problem getting in the LC500's trunk, and that is that it is too shallow for my hips. So it will not close, unfortunately. Look at that. Me and the LC, our hips are just too big. <laughs> now that we're inside the part of the LC 500 that humans are actually supposed to be in, you can see that it is this stunning shade of white with blue accents. This car is absolutely beautiful. And every single time you start it up, the infotainment screen and the driver instrument cluster explode in this black and blue starburst of lights. It makes you feel like a star, even more of a star than you already felt like when you got in here. Everything in here is so beautiful and so purposeful. You have this mixture of materials. You have the leather, the suede, the brushed silver, the alternating between the white and the blue and the silver. It's beautiful. And another very underrated thing in this interior is if you look right here, there's no 
touchpad. Lexus is one of those automakers, along with Acura and some others, who for a very long time and a little bit still now, believed that the touchpad was the future, where you put your finger on a little mouse pad cursor and that was how you worked the infotainment screen. And for a long time, that is what the Lexus LC500 had. Lexus abandoned the touchpad, finally, after everyone told them to. And this LC500 does not have a touchpad in it. Now, if you think about the sales of LC500s in total, there are not that many of them. And for most of the run of this car, Lexus had a touchpad. So if you get an LC500 from one of these later years, like this one, you're gonna have an even more rare vehicle without the dreaded touchpad. You have the just super fancy little badge here that says Lexus LC bespoke build as if you couldn't tell from the beautiful interior. You also have the passenger gets two handles, one for each side. So if you decide to take this thing for a tough spin, they can hold on. This car also has a glass roof and I love the way the glass roof looks from the outside. My only nitpick from the inside is that if you close the glass roof, the little slider looks kind of cheap. It looks kind of Hyundai Elantra-y. <laughs> and I feel like if I was going to put a glass roof in this car, which is such an elegant and amazing car, I would have just put a full glass roof with the McLaren 720S little shade button on it that'll turn the roof darker. Or I would have done carbon fiber and not done the glass roof with the cheap little slidey thingy. It is now time to get in the back of the Lexus LC500. And I wanna tell you, I did not practice this beforehand. We are gonna show you the unedited journey and challenge of getting back here and actually sitting back here. And I think getting in the back of the LC500, which is a purse shelf, not a place for humans, just demonstrates what this car is. Look at that demonstrates what this car is, which is a car that makes you think it could be practical in a pinch, not a car that is inherently practical. Because people can sit back here for about 10 minutes. I've been in the back of an LC500 on a ride before and I hit my head a million times on this rear glass. It's a car that could be practical if you really, really needed it to be. But is it practical on a day-to-day -day basis? Maybe for a family of two. Welcome inside the Lexus LC500, which is one of my favorite cars ever made, and I think one of the greatest cars of our time. This is a grand tour, which means it is for luxury, it is for touring, and it is for feeling grand. And yet, when you bring it out on a good road, this car is just so impressive. Now I think from a baseline knowledge perspective, we need to know that this car weighs about 4,500 pounds. That is almost two Mazda Miatas. This is not a light car. This car, it's not meant for just going stripped down to the racetrack and being super light and super fast. This car is meant to be extremely luxurious, but also really fun to drive at the same time. So we're working with a very heavy car, one that is built for luxury, one that is not built first and foremost for sport. And yet, as you will see, this car is so sporty. Oh my goodness. The naturally aspirated V8 makes a sound unlike anything else. It just up to speed. It's incredible. And then you get in the car and the steering is so direct and heavy. And just listen to that acceleration and look at me go. Oh my goodness. That acceleration will not blow you out of the park. It will not make you sick to your stomach. What that acceleration will do is make you feel so 
powerful. And the goal isn't to blow you out of the park or make you feel sick or just be this horrific experience. The goal is for this car to feel amazing when it accelerates. If you wanted this to be the fastest car in the world, you would strip out all the luxury and you would bump the power to 800 instead of 471. No, the LC500 is about having the luxury you need with the sport you want. So, pedal feel. These pedals are perfectly heavy. I hit the gas pedal, there's a springiness to it, there's a weight to it that just feels so nice. The brake pedal has a great amount of tension. It's not light, it's not just non-existent. The tension is there so that when I stop this car, I feel sporty and good. The steering is extremely direct, but it's not very communicative. And that's by design. This car is meant to be extremely luxurious. So you don't want the steering to communicate all the undulations of the road. You just want it to go where you want it to go. And it does. It's so direct. It's perfectly weighted. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's so nice and luxurious in here. And the whole time you're sitting against this pristine white seat with all these blue accents in here. And it's incredible. It's beautiful in here. Oh my goodness. What a vehicle. you just go through the corner and it's not even hard on your body. Sometimes you go through a corner in a car and you really have to work your core in order <laughs> to not just go side to side. But when you go into a corner in this car, it just is so planted and balanced and perfect that it's not a core workout to simply take a harsh corner. take this thing from a standstill. Oh, it sounds so good. It feels so good. And I think the true charm of this car is that it's a grand tour that happens to be fast and loud and great, but isn't built primarily for that. That is just a bonus of being in an LC500. And it's incredible. You mash the gas pedal and it can go from easy, beautiful Grand Tour to revving all the way to Redline in a, in a second. It's incredible. You have every world you could possibly want in this car. It's not the best of both worlds. It's the best of every world ever. It's such a unique feeling to be in a grand tour like this, and especially one at this price, $100,000? This car has competitors in the $300,000 range, and it's right there with them. Oh my goodness, I just cannot fathom why everyone with six figures to drop on a car isn't dropping it on this car. Why are only 100 people a month buying the LC500? I will never understand. But also, part of me puts myself back in the situation when I was younger and I didn't know much about cars. And if you told me something about a Lexus LC500, I would say, what is that? Like a sedan or something? I wouldn't know. And I think the tragedy of this car is that people don't know and people need to know because it's the most incredible thing. Oh my goodness. When you want to have an easy, perfectly fine, chill drive, it's amazing. The suspension is an absolute dream. It's just so 
cushy. I mean, I'm on a really rough road right now and I'm going really fast and I'm just, just here, you know? I'm relaxed, I'm fine. And yet when you wanna push it, this car is so good to push and it sounds so good. We are in an era where natural aspiration isn't a thing. Everything has a turbocharger or a supercharger on it. It doesn't sound like this. This car makes me so happy and so excited, but also so sad because we should have given this car more love for all of the years leading up to right now. This car deserves high sales numbers. It deserves so much praise. And yet no one is ever talking about it. It's just me and like four other auto riders who post about the LC500 four times a week. No one else talks about it. And that is such a shame because Toyota and Lexus just make this wide range of sports cars and grand tours and luxury cars and off-roaders. And we just don't give the LC500 the attention it deserves. And that's a tragedy. But maybe this video can change that. Picture the modern cars you see on dog-eared posters in a kid's room, Bugatti Chiron, Ford GT, McLaren 720S, Lamborghini Aventador, or Lamborghini Huracan, maybe even a Koenigsegg Yesco or a Rimac Navera. What you don't picture is the Lexus LC500. Why? I can't give you a scientific answer, but I can give you a couple of guesses. The first is that Lexus's naming structure doesn't do its performance cars any favors. An LC doesn't have the same presence as a Chiron or an Aventador. It doesn't tell me what the car is or how special it is. It just tells me an abbreviation that most people don't know the definition of. The Lexus LFA, which stands for Lexus Future Advance, is an outlier, not because of its name, but in spite of it. The other problem is that I don't often see the LC500 in marketing. And when I do, that marketing doesn't say, hey, this is an LC, it rocks. I think I've seen one commercial with an LC500 and I can't recall it even being named in that commercial. Lexus isn't Lamborghini or Ferrari. Normal people aren't going to automatically assume Lexus has one of the coolest sports cars out here. They need to be told and I don't think that's happening. So now it's time to do my part and tell you all about how I feel about this LC500. Welcome to Alanis's report card. First up on our list is the exterior. It gets an A. I mean, look at it. I don't really have to say anything else. The interior also gets an A. If you put this vehicle in a pageant, it would win. The performance gets an A minus because even though I look at this car every single day of my life and think about how much I love it, my heartstrings want a manual if I'm gonna buy one myself. The value on this car is an absolute A. I know it's $100,000, I know that's a lot of money, but this car beats $300,000 cars in its same category. Would I take this on a road trip? I would absolutely take this on a road trip. I would take this on a road trip to the end of the earth and never come back. And overall, this is an A. This car is amazing and no one knows how truly amazing it is until they've been in one. And I hope, even if you haven't been in one, I've gotten you close enough today for you to realize that. People toss the term future classic around like it's a football, but the LC500 really is one. It's one of the best cars of our time, but no one's buying it. It sells in minuscule numbers, making it feel like an alien on the streets of Earth. But the LC500 isn't the alien. It's the spaceship, blasting by your wide eyes before they've even processed what they're seeing. Years from now, the Lexus LC500 will be highly desired, and it'll be rare. If you have one, you'll be lucky, because deep down, you and I both know that these are the LC500's roads. We're just driving on them.